Hey y'all, this is Hazzy. And Nordic Monkey. And today we've got another amazing indie game for you. This one's called Burn the Shape of Fantasy. Um, it's by the dev. You have it over Gametopia. there. Gametopia. And the publishers. Assemble Entertainment. And. And Whisper. Uh, Whisper Games. Whisper Games. Yeah. And Whisper Games. So the reason I was attracted to this game, why it caught my eye, but first I should say thank you, Key Mailer, for the key. Um, thank you, devs, for working with them, because if you didn't, I wouldn't be showcasing this right now. But I, what caught my eye with this game is the pixel art. Um, it reminds me of the game called The Captain, mm. but it's not the same people. Yeah. <laughs> it's just very reminiscent of that game. You were game. asking if it was. Yeah, because it looked so, like, the similarities in the art style, that's what it reminded me of, was The Captain. Um, I really liked that one as well. But this one is about, like, um, Jules Verne. So there's probably going to be a lot of literature-type stuff in here. So if you like books you know, like stories and literature, then this might be a good play for you. Exactly. It's a work of interactive fiction. So, Nor, do you want to read the description? Absolutely. What the game's about? The Shape of Fantasy. Burn. Become Jules Verne, an adventure into the dangers that hide in Himera, a fantas fantastic parallel world built from his own imagination. Explore, solve puzzles, and unlock the most coveted secrets of the mighty Atlantis. Sounds pretty cool. I think yeah. we'll find SpongeBob down there. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that was part of that, right? SpongeBob and Patrick. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was... They were wrote, written about I re I remember back that in the day. Yeah. I, don't, <laughs> like, I mean, it's really old. Like, Jules Verne's really old stuff. So yes. Definitely Patrick and SpongeBob must have been there, too, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. I mean, it does say this is dystopian, <laughs> and what could be more dystopian than... Before we jump into the game, if you're interested in going to wishlist it right now before you've even seen any of the gameplay, there is, as always, a link down below in the descriptions. Um, give it a wishlist or purchase, whichever you may. It's already and if been you need released. To figure it out for yourself right now. You can download the demo. See how much you like it. Oh, there's a demo? Yes, there is. Well, there is. you go. <laughs> there you go. Try out the demo. Okay, let's jump in. You know what it's saying? It's saying it's uh, similar to Strange Horticulture. And I kind of see a bit of that. Okay, we I played this earlier. I ain't gonna lie, but we're gonna we're gonna jump in with a new game so y'all can see you can see it. You mean you didn't want to come in completely unprepared and not knowing what was going on? Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. I'm gonna be doing that. We're gonna be playing a lot more of our indie games over here on the on the YouTube channel. On the YouTube. <laughs> on our YouTube channel. Um, so you may see like I may like play a little bit before we put the video up mm -hmm. just so I get an idea before you so I'm not I'm not having to like cut out lots of stuff because because like, like I don't troubleshooting problems yeah. or other things where you're not even really able to get started or I don't want to or if something that I take like way too long on I'm not trying to bore y'all yeah. I want you to just experience the game and get you hyped about it so you be go interested and go spend your money on it <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do exactly we're not trying to take away from the art. Yeah. We're trying to make sure. I like having the. Wasn't the name of the ship the Nautilus? Yes. That's a. Uh, with the Nautiloid ship right now. That's you know. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Uh, other 1888. The end of the nation is very close, Vern. You are very confident about your triumph. Until we open the chest, we won't know for sure if the compass of destiny is really inside. The chest is in perfect shape after 2,000 years under the sea. No human technology can do that. It's Atlantean, that's for sure. The ship, the inscriptions, all the pieces fall into place. The compass of destiny is inside. We are going to change the course of this goddamn war, Vern. We're going to the compass of destiny. Take it to Mr. Vern's lab and start maneuvers to ascend for air recycling. Vern's going to have some studying to do. <laughs> will change it all. The guy was in Finding Nemo. The guy was in Finding Nemo. 
No. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Nemo's back there somewhere, not getting too, trying not to get too close to our ship. <laughs> it's just funny because if you think about it, there are so many. Or things. maybe Nemo took over the captain's brain. <laughs> that could have like, happened. It's just funny because of how much uh, this work has influenced various other things that have to do with the sea. An ocean of despair, March twenty fifth, eighteen eighty eight. March twenty fifth, eighteen eighty eight. Scientific officer log. It's a great day for the captain, who has asked me to begin documentation while he delivers a speech to the crew in the library. After months of searching, at last he found it. He doesn't have the slightest doubt that the compass of destiny is in his hands. An old artifact that, once released from inside this chest, it is supposed to guide us safe and sound to the flame of Hephaestus, the most powerful energy source in the world. Ooh. The Deadbolt has a complex defensive system, and the... Uh-oh. Earthquake. No. Earthquake on, on the submarine. <laughs> you, um... Okay. You remember who Hephaestus was? I don't know. Uh, the, um... Okay. Like, god of the blacksmith. Vern here. Vern, quick! The nation is attacking us! Not a God single Atlantean yeah, piece can know. fall into their... I think you Mon probably Dieu. told me before. Math, math, math! Mon 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 must Mon hurry Mon to recover the iMac. It, it's inside of the armory's safe room. And wait there. It's the safest place around. Okay. So here we go. Okay, this is going to talk about the iMag. At Atlantean reality altering device. Do you want to read this? Sure. The iMag is a powerful Atlantean device capable of detecting fissures in the flow of reality and offering its user the different possibilities that could take place in the same instant. Okay, so we get some time manipulation in-game? That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it, it is pretty cool. I was really happy to see that, too, because I like time manipulation games. Yeah, there, there have been a lot of really cool mechanics with that. There was the um, the one that you did, uh, Peaky, Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders, yeah. yeah, that was fun. I probably should get back to that one. But I left off on one that I was like, okay, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. A first and unique prototype was manufactured a few months before the incident that caused the destruction of the Atlantean civilization. Created with the intention of speeding up construction and technological development, they discovered, however, that the um, IMAG, and that's how it's pronounced? Yeah. Okay. Had a limitation. Very few could provide it with the tremendous amount of imagination necessary for optimum performance. Only the brightest and most creative minds could do so. And that's when they introduced LSD. <laughs> yeah, or some sort of psychedelics. The, the goddess Plasia. Hmm. Is that you? I don't want to give it away, but you'll learn more about is... Plasia. Here so that's prop... in the I, story. I said it cor correct. Yeah. Okay, good. The goddess Plasia um, intervene in its manufacture, inspiring Atlantean engineers and providing ideas for its operation. However, neither she nor any primordial could use it, since the emotional influences emanating from them affected the flame of Hephaestus, destabilizing it. Whatever plans the Atlanteans had for its manufacture were abruptly interrupted by the um, hec hec hectatome or hectatome? Hectatome? I think tomb, T-O-M-B. Mm -hmm. Hectatome that wiped out to their land. So the iMag became a unique device on Himera. After, uh, after that, it simply disappeared. Its location gave rise to hundreds of theories. The most plausible being the one that describes how several surviving Atlantean families hid it in what we now know as Greece, becoming an object of veneration and giving rise to the pre-Hellenic cult of Plasia, which had a short but intense existence. So this kind of also relates to some of the stuff, um, like it looks like it's going to maybe touch even in Gnosticism and some of that other stuff. Like it seems like it's working in various old belief systems, including mm -hmm. um, like worship that in, that was in the Greek pantheon and, and several back other in things. The days. Yeah, I like when they do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They did a lot of Gnosticism in um, the excavation of Hobbs Barrow, which is another point and click that I one of my favorites. Your favorite. I would say one of my favorite all-time games mm -hmm. up there with um, If on a Winter's Night for Travelers. I love point-and-click, so yeah. 
New story mission, saving the Nautilus. Okay. Go to the armory to protect the iMag. Okay, so this is our room. Can't get into any of these. We all are the Nautilus. That reminds me of the to Expanse. The <laughs> yeah. Propaganda. I must hurry to the Armory. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just checking everything out, sir. I must hurry to I the Armory. I know, I know, I know. Hurry to the Armory. Mad. The elevators are disabled. No. Blocked. There's only one way to the Armory. Going outside. I'm uh, saving the Nautilus go outside in us. Okay, let's look at the map because we didn't look at it. Oh, wow. So we're right here. Yeah, isn't this a nice looking map? Which I should probably take a picture because I think this is a really nice looking map of the ship that we're on. Mm -hmm. So I really, I really like it. Okay, so it looks like we should either be able to go down or up. And the armory is all the way to the left. Um, but we can't get through where we're at uh, to the left. So we're going to have to take up or down. I don't. Sounds like a fairly complicated Going process. down. Okay. It's not the answer. It's a cul-de-sac. Okay, so we can't do that, so... Ladders. Oh. Okay. Oh. So we're gonna have to go up. And we'll go towards the left. Does since... it load in the music? Oh, no, it just shifts up. I, I see. I love... This is... This reminds me of the captain a little bit. Yeah. Because the captain... They had, like, a ship... This was... The captain happens in space, though, and mm. it's not really... It's... I... I think they more took inspiration from, like, Star Trek, not yes. from, like, this is, like, classic literature from back in the day, so. Yeah. Um, that was very, that one was very sci-fi. Okay, we can't the, get through that. This type of fantasy. Oh, damn. Well, that's a cracked window. <laughs> it was a little cracked. Those are some pretty big, uh, claws. The Valkyrie. It's eerier than I thought. I must get to the front hatchway. Okay, reach the front of the front hatch. Visible icon appears. So we're gonna be doing some stealthing. Uh, let's you know if you're, if you, if you're being seen. Oh. Dude, we had to use grappling hooks in the military, but nothing that large. <laughs> Oh shoot! I, I ran a little bit too quickly. <laughs> if they only have like, so you can run, or you can like um, walk, but the walk is very slow, and you can't like really change the. You know what I mean? Like, we're gonna stay here until this passes. So were you underwater and you guys got something? Hold up. What the hell? <laughs> Is that what I understand? Uh, I think so, yeah. We're, I've, we've been attacked or something. I don't under totally understand. Okay, I'm trying to figure out when I can go. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not oh, good at good. stealth. It's all good. Okay, now let this go up. Let's go. <laughs> Good move. I'm, I'm trying to be careful so I don't get caught. Because then they're like, halt! Oh, I should be running. <laughs> I'm dogging too much. Ah! <laughs> like. Maybe the main door is not a good idea. Right here, we're gonna stay. <laughs> like. Big pull on a submarine like that, isn't it? Ooh, we made it. Whew, made it to the hatch. <laughs> Good work, the Hazzy. <laughs> Thanks, the Nord. <laughs> Saving the Nautilus. Go to the armory to protect the iron. Go on that side. So here's the map. And that's where we're at. Did you ever watch and the movie 10,000 so Leagues Under the Sea? I've never. Maybe we should watch that. Maybe I would we have, should. That would be a, a I, cool I thing like to, to do to relate. I'm reading a lot lately, and I'm kind of this game's kind of making me interested in reading more. But I've never read the Jules Verne stuff, 
So it's making me more interested in reading the Jules Verne because I like classic literature. Um, but I haven't ever, I haven't dived into this. But also, I like watching uh, movies about, from classic literature as well, too. Okay, so we got to figure out I'm how sorry, to 20,000 leagues. Like, that number isn't quite right, is it? 20,000 isn't. Where it's like, I'm Reed. <laughs> it's gemmed. Go this way? Or is that how we. Yeah, yeah. Nope? Okay. We still can't. Mail. These elevators don't work either. Can we go down? Oh, mon dieu! Adam Shun! This is a massacre! Wait. It killed our friends. These bullet wounds on Shun. There are no blood drops around. He was shot after he was dead. That's disconcerting. There's a setup. Yeah, it's very disconcerting. I must hurry to the arbor. You don't want to go up? Okay. Can't go through. Okay, down. He's like, I must hurry to the armory, and I'm like, I'm trying to the get The library you. access seems clear, but I must reach the armory. All right, all right. So he doesn't seem to want to go that way. It's jammed. I have to go down to the armory. Maybe I can open the safety hatches from the bridge. Okay, so let's go look at the. We gotta go to the can bridge. Can you open now. the map anytime, or is it just no, when you get just to... when you pa when you pass it? I see. On the ship. I see. So we're right here. We need to go to the top left to get to the bridge. So we need to go back up. Mm -hmm. And left. Yeah, and left. Um. Okay. Okay. Mon dieu! Mon dieu! Murd, murd. I don't know what I'm saying. I like that it's like a French sounding thing because um, I've been reading a lot of Agatha Christie. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, uh, Poirot, mm -hmm. always with the French accent. And there's lots of French names. And there's another like French detective, Giraud, mm -hmm. who's who's in the story. that Because I'm reading The Murder on the Lynx right now. Okay. And... Um, yeah, I like I like hearing the French stuff because I don't know French at all. So, so I'm kind of getting a little taste of the uh, of like French because um, I'm listening to the audiobooks, but I'm trying to I'm getting a little bit of the hearing the French um, words because I'm not very good at them. Um, it's Ben. Is somebody there? No foes here. If somebody's here. It's the end. Where is everybody? And Nadine? The pilot has disappeared. Very likely she has been captured with the others at the library. What happened? How is that even possible that- I don't know. The server radars didn't work. Nothing has worked. They crushed us. Damn, Raven. The Raven? Mert. Well, Mert. that's not the worst of all. The captain has activated the Nautilus self-destruction. Oh. What? He or... will never let his technology fall into the hands of the nation. How much time do we have? Less than ten minutes. Mon dieu! <laughs> you are the second in command. Can't you disactivate it? Only Nemo knows the code. Finding he told Nemo. Me to protect the bridge <laughs> to speed away as soon as we release ourselves. But the engines are currently paralyzed until the captain reactivates the core. That's why we're still outside. Oh my god! What would we do? You are the only one who can do something. We gotta oh, go save what? Nemo, dude. The only what? I'm not a soldier. Well, now you must become one. I will yep. open the hatches to the armory chamber. Once there, take the iMag and do whatever you can to save the Nautilus. B the iMag? It's not a weapon. We barely know how to use it or what it can do. What if it sinks us? What do you fancy more? A quick death beneath the sea or a long life of tortures at one of the nation's penitentiary mines? Mm. Good choices. Move! <laughs> Move! Come on, Jules Verm, gotta go. Go to the armory and use the eye mag. So we're still going to the armory. Go down. Is she hurt? Um, I'm... Is she looks hurt. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't say she was hurt. Okay, I'm I'm actually trying to see if there's anything. You're just checking. Yeah, yeah, I get it. 
I still have some stuff to do. Okay, so not this way then? Or is there another... You gotta go down to the armory. So not here. Okay, let's go this way. Mailed! Aha! Uh -huh. Some, some French person who be watching this be like, <laughs> they cannot talk French. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Your ancestors would be so disappointed. <laughs> we've been playing. A, there's a funny thing is we've been this year we played so many games by French devs. Mon True. Dieu! Yeah, Mon Dieu is right. Maybe the captain did that to get a get them to leave. Oh uh, yeah, that might be. I mean, nobody wants to hang out on. On a, a ship that's ship about, about to be self scuttled. Destruct. <laughs> oh, it's just, that's it's why they have jammed. scuttling charges on so many vessels. He grabbed that paper with his last strength. It's bloodied. I like how the door's open. Yeah, I like it too. Now look at this woo-woo box. It's fancy. It's making a woo-woo sound. Okay, so that's... I'm coming, I'm coming. The eye mag. Okay. Let's put away the eye mag for now. Uh, armory here. Vern, the Opta recorders show that the Raven has cornered the captain and the engine core. Go there. I will open the hatch. And what am I supposed to do? Think. You'll figure something out. You're an imaginative guy. Well, thank you. Yeah. We are imaginative. <laughs> Uh-oh. The iMag is an The iMag is an Atlantean <laughs> artifact thank capable you. of detecting cracks in reality and making small rewrites at specific moments. In case things get difficult for you, see to activate. So maybe you can change before that crashed. Yeah, that's what... Um... iMag offers logical choices. Explore the world to get more options. Select one, but be careful, not all of them have a happy ending. Okay. <laughs> Fortunately, damages in the area weren't considerable. Hopefully clearing this is not going to be an unhappy ending. Well done. Now you must wait for the iMag to recharge. If you choose wrong, the iMag may go back a short time. But beware, it doesn't happen often. Happy rewriting! Happy. Okay. Um, okay. It's broken. I could try to fix it with the iMac. Okay, let's try to use it. The electric board kept withstanding. Great. Go to the core to save mm, Nemo. That paper. I could try it with the iMac. Before dying, he released a paper he was holding in his hand. It's a clue. <laughs> Maybe a clue to the killer. All right, here we go. Um, do you want me to read some Ancient of it? Ancient Prussian Kingdom. Okay, that make that makes sense that they would make them a major sea power because they were competing. Mm -hmm. uh, with the UK at that time. Okay, the Prussian kingdom, after years of war, gathered um, from her defeated neighbors enormous wealth and great scientists whose work allowed her to develop impressive technological advances. Thanks to this superiority, in a few years she annexed a large part of Europe. A uh, large part of Europe. To... Maybe it's T-O-O -O yeah. is the type two. Um, in 1815, proclaim, proclaim herself as the nation. The only one, because there can be only one true nation and only one identity that uh, protects a civilized human being from barbaric savagery. Okay, so 1815. So this is all like um, similar time frame to like the Napoleonic Wars. So instead okay. of uh, the Prussians getting their butts kicked, um, they they already came to strength. Okay. Yeah. In 1835, the nation began her global expansion and the uh, Great Asiatic Thirty Years' War began. Huh. Another another 30 years' war. Interesting. Um, 
1860, after the capitulation of the Sino-Japanese alliance and the defeat of Great Russia, the nation turned its gaze to the Golden Empire of Africa. The war spread beyond the continent, and the world of Himera suffered years of atro atrocities under the nation's rule. In 1880, after several years of tyrannical peace, and thanks to the technology developed by Captain Nemo, thousands of citizens finally united in a global resistance to fight a planetary-scale guerrilla war against the nation. To the surprise of their military leaders, the fire of revolution was rekindled throughout Himera. Today, the nation is led by the men of the Curia. Oh, so um, by the Pope. A select group of 23 um, pro-men, members of the political, military, and scientific elite, each year, amid great displays of patriotism, a member of the Curia assumes power, but it is no more than a uh, formalism since the nation is managed by more than one head. In fact, one of its foundations is the great power struggles between the various groups that fight to occupy as many seats in the Curia as possible. One can only become part of the Curia by replacing one of its members, so accidents, illnesses, and suicides oh, are not uncommon in its history. I like how they put the quotes around accidents, illnesses, suicides. <laughs> exactly. Obviously, the common people have no real voice or vote in the Curia, nor, of course, do they have the slightest influence on the actions of the nation, no matter how much propaganda claims otherwise. Well, that's really interesting. They did not mention anything in the Americas. Yeah. You notice, which obviously wasn't a major power, in that mm -hmm. time frame, but it was still like, you know, something that you would hear about. It is cool that uh, Japan and China united to fight. Mm hmm. Where was I going? I'm going to the. Or. Or. Okay, it's right there. We are right here. So I'm going to go to the down and to the right. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. That I don't think. Where can I go down? I think, um, can you just go right? Oh, maybe I can go. Oh. Do this. There we go. Cool. It's easy to get lost in the submarine because this submarine is huge. <laughs> get in the Jeffrey's tubes. Get in the Jeffrey's. Blocked! Okay, so maybe. No cracks in the flow of reality here. Oh, so we can't use it? Okay. We're gonna have to find a different one. There's gotta- come on! There's gotta... No cracks. Here we- oh yes, there- look, tidy, tidy person. person. Maddie is so good stacking supplies that not even the bombs could have moved them. Good thinking. Yeah, I'm waiting for the power to come back on that because we're it's still in our way. Okay. The explosions didn't affect the room. I wish I had a magical thing. Oh, oops. <laughs> we fell down there. <laughs> Can you jump? No, you can't jump. Well, There's then you enough. probably had no choice but to fall. I still have some stuff to do. Okay, so well, let's go into the docks room. Okay. Blocked! I can only use the iMag if I know the possible options. I must find another way inside. Okay. Let's look at the map. Where are we at? We're right there. It looks like, it looks like there's a maintenance under, thing, yeah. but, uh, or we can, yeah, that looks like we gotta go to the maintenance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Maybe this right here? You see, there's like a thing I thought that I could... No? I can't use this. Oh! Did I see something? This is my mind. This is my mind. <laughs> like this thing looks like something that would let me go down there. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Let's take out the eye mag. Yep. Before dying, he left the emergency hatch open. I'm glad I checked with that. <laughs> Good thinking. Okay, we're in the Jeffrey's tubes. I'm gonna go this way to see if there's anything. Nope, okay. 
Crouch, crouch, crouch. Fire at will. Watch the flanks. Okay, that sounds bad. Somebody's getting shot up over here. Hopefully Nemo didn't die. Protect the core. No, Nemo's Don't let talking. them take it over. It doesn't work. It must have run out of energy. I could fix the electric board. Save the nozzle. Fix the electric. Watch the flanks. Okay. Okay. Fix the electrical panel by removing the melted part. Choose a part, select and deselect it, and then once selected, you can move it. Okay. Nautilus, hurry up and save Nemo. I'm going, I'm going. I like it when a game says hurry up, hurry but you up. have like <laughs> you could come back like four weeks later and it's still fine. <laughs> uh oh. It must be the raven, the one in the middle. You just don't yeah. know when to surrender. Isn't that so? Of course not. I still have to finish your face. The Nautilus <laughs> is at last in the nation's hands. Tell me how to deactivate the self-destruction and take my word as a gentleman. I will free your crew. Mm. Ah, gentlemen, I saw in the penitentiary mind what to free means to you, you damn sadist. I will die before releasing the Nautilus to your masters. It's a shame to end our relationship like this, but wish granted, Captain. This time you will not escape. Brothers, take aim! No! What am I doing? Vern? What are you doing? What, what am I doing? Oh, you must be Mr. What are you Vern, doing? And that Let's do it. thing you're threatening me with is the amazing Atlantean artifact I've heard so much fuzz. Release them and get out! Don't move! Get back! Don't make me use this! Don't be stupid, Nemo! Stop the countdown before we all die! No! Then say goodbye to your dear Van. No! Okay, to use the iMag at full capacity, complete the sequence by pressing the correct symbols before the time runs out. If you find the quick time events... Okay, well, we're gonna try it. But what the... again? No! Ooh. I will find you! The iMac had never displayed that amount of power It's a before. con moment. <laughs> My mind was dragged again to the bridge, an image that was torturing me over the last months. I didn't wake up until a few hours later, a time that surely Nemo felt was like an eternity. Saving the Nautilus. So it looks like you like teleported them quite a ways away. Yeah. That's pretty powerful. Uh, diving into memories. Chapter 2, March 27th, 1880, South Atlantic. Captain, my take is that the only way to open it safely is exposing it to the iMac. Are you sure? This dead bolt is a piece made by Phobos priests. Their devices were famous for being impenetrable, forged with the remainders of a meteorite. If anyone messes with it, it will launch a discharge of an energy that will cause a deep, infinite terror to whoever receives it. An well, energy do that. that causes terror? That's preposterous. Maybe for you, but for the Atlanteans, the power of Phobos was real enough. Do you think that fear, destructive imagination, and hopelessness don't exist? Not presented in the shape of fireworks and sparks. If you don't believe me, feel free to break the chest with a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> How can the iMag open it? The iMag feeds itself with Mr. Verne's imagination and uses it to creatively change our reality. Therefore, so Verne's the genius that gets to use the iMag. Directly iMac. opposed to the kind of energy that the deadbolt uses. Okay, here, Verne. I'm Vern. reasonably convinced that the energy of the iMag will nullify the one in the lock. You mean, like sand and rust? Could be. 
The deadbolt is a rusty key, and the eye mag, the sand that wipes away when scrubbed. Do it, Vern. What the...? What now? The eye mag. It... it doesn't work. It looks like it ran out of energy. That explosion must have dried it up. You must make it work. Make we it must work. release the compass of destiny from this chest. Shouting at me won't help. Adriel, go and look for Petrov. May he bring the torch and... Captain, Nemo is I not happy. I must advise against force opening the chest. Unless you want to lose your mind. What is imperative now is to find an answer to why the iMag is dead. If you have any theory, spit it out now. It's possible that... Given that the iMag gets its energy from the imagination of its host, the problem is inside your mind, Vern. In my mind? Yes, that's true. I you talked reminds about me of doctor, the Doctor Who screwdriver. Yes. Yeah. For an instant, I traveled back to a bridge in Paris. I had a similar vision at the island. Do you remember seeing something like this in your vision? It certainly has a likeness with the shadow I saw at the bridge, but... Are you telling me that I saw Phobos, the Atlantean god of fear? Fear is a narrow description of what Phobos really meant to the Atlantean people. For them, he was the destructive imagination, the one born out from despair and angst. You could also say that his sister Placea, however, represented fantasy. But the truth was that she was perceived as the source of the creative imagination, the one that thrives from hope. I think that Atlanteans believed that the balance between the two brothers dictated one's own sanity. If Phobos has broken that balance in your mind, that would explain the IMAG silence. Mythology? You're talking about mythology? I don't believe in Phobos, hence it's impossible that it's harming me. Phobos the is in the expanse. Is, it's there. You are afraid. Leave it, Vern. Too much fear inside you. Until you don't master it, I'm afraid that the IMAG will never work again. I refuse to believe in Hocus Pocus. And how can you explain the iMag Blast? Good movie. It saved your life. <laughs> I don't question that the Atlantean technology doesn't work. What I mean is that- Enough with the debate! We are losing precious time. What matters is that the iMag only works with you. It's obvious that your hallucinations are a symptom of some kind of disorder. Visit Dr. Cedric and get yourself a neurological check. That's an order. All right. All right, dude. You, Adriel, check the reparations. We must keep afloat for two days until we get to the base. We must assume that Commander Hetzel is not far from us. Yes, Captain. Why are you still here? Aren't you bothered by the way we were attacked? They fell upon us too easily. It's more than probable that there is a traitor on board. A traitor? Yeah. We In the have Nautilus? Like, gotta... Never. I have personally here. chosen each member of this crew. There is no question that the nation has found a way to decode our communications. Um, I envy your confidence, Captain. But you should be aware that during the attack, I found that someone shot Shun's body after his death. I believe that the murderer was trying to hide the fact that he was killed before the boarding. God damn it. Let's keep our eyes opened. If there is a traitor in such a small space, he or she will be exposed sooner or later. God damn it! God damn it, man! <laughs> so, um, Adriel seems to know a lot. Mm -hmm. And there hasn't been an explanation given. Like, is she Atlantean or something? Like, I don't know yet. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I it, may have my issues, but Atlantean my interest. magic. Come on. Let's go she could to just be highly three intelligent. see Doc. <laughs> yeah. The new story mission aftermath, part one. Go see the doctor. So do you have any impression on Let's who... go to our room real quick. Do you have any impression on who might be the, um, the, sure the one um, causing problems? Um, the I betrayer? Have, I have no idea. I don't know. I haven't seen enough to be able to make a... Uh, Educated guess. Yeah. That's the one we saw. 
I had seen the achievements. We want to we want to get these to collect these posters when we see them. Oh, okay. You'll get an achievement for getting all of them. I kind of have a feeling that it's Captain Let's look at Nemo. The map. I mean, he's kind of grumpy. <laughs> so, and yeah, and he's like, "Hurry up! We only have so much time." He seems very like. Like, like I don't know, forceful, but it almost seems like a little odd forcefulness. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know because I have. I don't know yet. I don't, mm -hmm. haven't seen enough information yet. Um, where are we going? We gotta go to the doctor's or the doctor. So we gotta go down and way to the left, but not to the very bottom. Yeah, you All were right. you were almost there before. All right. Here. Not. We are underwater. Oh, that's that one for going outside? Okay. So can we not make this work? I wonder if we can... Oh yeah, we can't use the iMag. I forgot. Ah, so we can't make that work. Um, what else? We can go to the library. And then go down. Uh, and then go down. Let's just go through the library then. I was going to go down and then go to the left, but we can't. So, yeah. Go through the library. Ooh, Let's it's a pretty organ. library. Nemo's organ has always fascinated me and also gives me chills, just like the captain. Maybe the captain's giving you chills because he's the guilty party. Who knows? You were saying you think Nemo might be... I don't trust him, man. Mm -hmm. Because if you found out that sort of information... Mm -hmm. What does mobilis and mobile mean? Or, I know I'm not probably saying it right, but... What is that? Like, it's move in the move, moving thing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Uh, Sounds Latin of some way. Move but, in the moving thing. What's all um, this? Nope. Gotta check that out. Wow, this is actually really pretty. I love this library, even though, like, the books are down on the floor and some of the shelves are broken. <laughs> I love it. Love this library. I feel like the creators have created this in ode to like literature <laughs> and the Jules Verne stuff and yeah, I love it. I love when somebody can create create something with inspiration, something that they really uh care about. Okay, so they go to the CO2 room, it looks like. It doesn't work. I can't reach the sick bay. I'll go to the bridge and see moving if Nadine in a moving can help thing. Me. Or poetically, Talk to Nadine changing on the bridge. through the changing medium. What? Moving in a moving thing, okay. or poetically, changing through the changing medium. So I think it's you're in the water. I think it's moving in the moving thing because we're in the Nautilus. So I was right when I guessed. Is that like movement in a thing that moves? <laughs> but also, like you're making musical movements. Mm. While Mr. in a moving ship, and then These you know, are quite the changing dangerous. medium, you know, the water is doing that. Polluted air. Anyway, anyways, I there's polluted air. Be what careful. about you, Sumi? Don't worry, I'm used to it, and it takes a big deal of carbon dioxide to knock me down. Will they hold until we reach the base? <sighs> I'm working on it. Don't worry about Sumi. Sumi's got that. Without like, them, we couldn't breathe. Front labor I'll stop bothering you. Good luck with that. <laughs> Thanks. She's coughing. I will need it. I'm worried about Sumi. She like laugh coughed. It's fine. <laughs> it's probably not good for her. You know how it was back in the day. People would do jobs that weren't good for them. Oh my god, yeah. I don't really know where the bridge. If I'm going the right way to the bridge, hopefully. There it is. Okay. Nadine is always reading these penny dreadfuls. <laughs> Awfully boring literature, so to speak. <sighs> so judgy, Vern. Jeez. <laughs> Jules, good to see you. Nadine, I'm glad you're alive. I have a big headache thanks to a rifle butt, but I'm in one piece, not like this melting piece of junk. It is still a striking piece of junk. That's because I'm the one who steers it, babe. Hmm. <laughs> Do you think they will find us again? No doubt about it. 
We have decoded a radio message from the nation. The raven is still alive and it's behind us at full throttle. Your hocus pocus stuff only sent him 200 miles away from us. So they're 200 miles away. Later he will fall upon us and that's for sure. If we keep ourselves underwater, he won't find us. We have been two days without recycling air and the oxy recyclers are quite damaged. If we don't emerge soon, you will news. discover what's like to want to puke with every breath. Wonderful. <laughs> the attack has been more of an ambush. Don't you agree? They were waiting for us. Did any radio message come out the days before? You must have seen it. Negative. Ten days ago, the captain imposed silence at the Nautilus. Nothing comes in, neither out. Is there any radio channel that avoids the primary systems? Nemo's personal telecommunicator. He's the only one that holds the codes. He uses it for his business with the resistance cells. You were a part has a tele of one of these cells, name. isn't that so? you remember yeah. that? <laughs> you can bet your ass. I never had eaten more mutt in my fucking life. <laughs> we traveled fast through Emira, no more than three days in the same spot. We stole from the nation everything that wasn't hammered to the ground. The good thing about that is that I barely knew the war front. And then the Nautilus. Think about it. A toddler like me. Recruited by the Nautilus. I would have done anything Nemo asked me. Not anymore. Well, I've been locked here for a while, fighting. And I feel that there's a lot of things outside that I'm missing out. Fighting tyranny is a horrible job. But someone has to do it. Someone has to do it. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, let's ask I came for a more mundane issue. Can you activate the elevators for a moment? I must reach the sick bay. Of course, and I'll be fine. I will give you a few seconds of energy. We are so low at fuel that even seals pass us. God, what I'd give for being shopping in New York. <laughs> okay, use elevators to go uh, to the doctor. Yay, elevators. I've been wanting to use the elevators the entire time. Okay. Uh, let's look at the map really quick. Uh, okay, so we're right here. So I'm gonna go down, down. Okay, hopefully this will take us through. Oh, it goes straight. Okay, <laughs> well, that's good. I thought I played this earlier, but that doesn't mean I remember everything. But yeah, it'll go straight to the dock. That's nice. <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to get out of the elevator, go to the next elevator. Um, the dock is this. Let's make sure there's nothing I can like. Okay, yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything I can really. Vern, you were here. Cedric. The nemiogram isn't prepared yet. Come on in. Make yourself comfortable. Nemiogram. How are you? I felt better before my conversation with Nemo. He's getting more nervous each day. <laughs> that happens to all of us. What's this device? Nemiogram? A memory writer? That's it. I designed it months ago. Well, hope but this, I haven't the hopefully chance this to will test help it. us so we can get the eye It a deep hypnosis trance to a patient, and it's ideal to explore the blocked corners inside his or her mind, theoretically. Theoretically. Yes. Your checkup from after the boarding shows no brain damage, nor blood clots that explain your hallucinations. I guess that's possible. So I decided to try an alternative approach. Hypnosis? Why? The IMAG and you are linked by imagination. Doctor, that sounds terribly Because you're a genius, Vern. <laughs> Call it in brainwaves or whatever you like. Oh, you, Vern. The undeniable matter here is that the IMAG only works with your brain. The Raven attack provoked a trauma. And because of that, the iMag doesn't work anymore. Oh, and how so is this something. machine supposed to cure me? It will not cure you. My intention with the Nemiogram is to discover what happened to you at that island. You have told me many times that although you don't hold any memory of that episode, you believe that there is where you found the iMag and suffered your first bridge hallucination. Maybe the memory of the events you experienced at the island holds the answer or at least a clue that will help us to cure your malady and the captain's concerns. 
a very interesting hypothesis, but frankly, Doc, are you sure that you aren't going to fry my brains? <laughs> of course not. Theoretically. Theoretically. I guess we'll be able to find out about it. Theoretically. Relax, while I finish <laughs> I the adjustments. I don't even know Burton's what that hard. is anymore. <laughs> so, how's the vaccine? Intact, at least. Luckily, the nation minions didn't make it to here. On the other hand, my research is absolutely at a standstill. Cholera is an extremely resistant bacteria. Each day, more and more people die from it. For what I've been informed, the horror I lived in India is nothing compared to what is going on right now among the workers of the nation's factories. You know you have me here for whatever you need. In the event I survive this machine, of course. Of course. Someone around here has told me a story about you facing the Bloody Raven years ago. I don't know who has told you such a stretch of the truth. I just have seen him once, from away, and he still froze the blood in my veins. It I was mean, a long time he's ago, a bad guy, in so India, makes sense. in a village in the middle of the jungle. We the Brits were holding our position in front of the nation's advances until the Raven and his Echo Guards arrived. How do you think they have found us? We didn't emerge for three days. Yeah. I've been at war too many years to still believe in coincidence. Did you analyze Shun's body? I believe I saw something. Something that didn't match the scene, right? He didn't die from bullet wounds. Lethal head injury. My suspicion, somebody attacked him from behind yep, we have a traitor the nation's on board. boarding. And then shot the body to blend the murder with the other deaths. That night, he was on bridge duty. And mysteriously, servo radar stopped working. Someone in the crew is... You should discuss these matters with the captain. I am just a doctor. My patients are my mission. And right now, you're one of them. When do we start? It's ready. Let's begin. Focus. Tell me about the bridge. It's a bridge in Paris, I believe. <laughs> Mist surrounds me. I have a strange feeling, because there is someone else here with me. I have felt that very same presence before, at the island, before the Nautilus. Focus on it. Let yourself go. Maybe it's the I'll eye try. bag. That's what he's feeling, I don't know. It's difficult to focus. Everything began six months ago, the day of the wreck of the AES Annabel Lee. Aftermath Part 1 Complete. Squidward. It's Squidward. <laughs> Come on, Squidward. <laughs> Don't give us that sour look. Ooh. Cedric's strange machine unleashed my memories, lightening the dark void of my stay at the island. I like the music. The Annabelle Lee was my first assignment as a scientific officer at the American Empire Navy. In addition to the war's own menace, there was a rumor that a huge sea monster was around, sinking ships. Despite my skepticism, three Damn weeks after our departure, they always in the get dead you. of night, that rumor became a reality. By pouncing on our ship and in a matter of minutes wrecking us. By some miracle, I survived. Luckily, the currents brought me to the island. Later, I understood that my extraordinary journey started right there. Okay, well, let's do this extraordinary journey. Chapter 3, An Extraordinary Voyage. October 3rd, 1887, Indian Ocean. Where am I? New mission, sto story mission is shelter. Okay. Hey, it's like you know that. Find a shelter. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm when like, we go I'm like, camping. Let's get water. And you're like, shelter. N Nord always tells a story because one time we had like a a hailstorm happen. And I was saying, because like I could tell there was a storm coming. We didn't know it was going to be a hailstorm. And I was like, we need to get the shelter now. But he was like, no, we really need water. Mm -hmm. And the, the storm hit us before we got the, the shelter up. Yeah. <laughs> and then you were like, I was just thinking, oh, what, 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 that's what why... can some rain do to us? We'll be fine. You and were... then hail balls, the freaking, the size of golf balls started hitting me. And I was like, okay. Well, and we you... had to stand under the tree. 
Well, I know that you were like, oh, that's why they always say shelter first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's I'm destroyed. Of water. <laughs> Fixing it will be it difficult. Smart. And we still don't have the eye mag. Nope. Okay, there's no eye mag here. Okay. Because you're in the path. Yeah. We're in our brain. If oh, I, because God. Because of that machine. The attack. The monster. That sea beast came out from beneath and rammed the Annabelle Lee, ripping Bracken. apart the hull like a rotten fruit. Why is it so hard to recall? No, it's good. <laughs> There's no sign of life. Maybe I will find someone inland. Oh, I well, that's foreshadowing. Shadowing. I think there is someone inland. I don't know, because I'm a... Like I said before, I did play this a little bit earlier. I didn't find nobody. So maybe if I maybe you can help me find the person. <laughs> okay. A petroglyph. It's ancient. It must mean something. You're enjoying the trees. An right? old mm -hmm. letter. I love palm trees. Seems to be <laughs> written by an outcast. It must be important. All right, read in time. Do you want me to read September it? September 19th, night and day, I could think of nothing but how I might destroy some of the monsters and their cruel, bloody entertainment. And if possible, save the victim they should uh, bring hither to destroy. And what could one man do among them when perhaps there might be 20 or 30 of them together with their darts or their bows and arrows with which they could shoot us, shoot as true uh, to a mark as I could with my gun. Okay. People doing a pretty good job with their arrows. Mm -hmm. They are. Uh, cast away. That's a side mission. Find the other two letters. Okay, so... We gotta move this, but... Can I get off of it? No, I can't. Get off. We gotta find two more letters. Oh, wait a minute. Can't just get off it. I gotta please press Q. Okay. All right. Just keep your eyes open because we do need another um, letter. Yeah. Can use it. Yep. Press E. <laughs> Apparently, that's what it says. Good job. Ooh, it's a view. This is why you go hiking. You see this a letter? You see a letter? Climb a barrel. <laughs> this is, this is why you climb a barrel. So you climb barrels in BG3, too. <laughs> sure. I need something to clear up this thicket. Sure. This place is a paradise, but not a soul around. I hope this island will not become my grave. Well, don't jinx yourself. <laughs> it was saying the Indian. Yeah. There's something written on it. In this place, I arrived on September the 30th of... I cannot read the year. A lift. A former inhabitant made it. I hope that if he's still around, he will be friendly. However, it's been a long time since this was built. It might work. If only I could find a tackle. Another petroglyph. The symbols are different. I need to break the lock. Yay. A tackle. Add the inventory. Okay. So we'll come back and use it on the lift. I'm going to do this. Okay. Yeah. There's a series of marks. It could be a calendar. If we take each of the small ones for a week and the big ones for months. Mon dieu. It's a whole life. Yeah, so I think that somebody's been here like counting down their days since they were here. Sounds like it. Yeah. Do you want to read?
November 27th. I was um, so much... Please don't. Hard to see through it. Yeah. Sorry, y'all. He's, he's going to get to it. November 27th. I was so much amazed with the thing itself, having never felt the like, nor discoursed with anyone that had, that I was like one dead or stupefied. And the motion of the earth made my stomach sick, like one that was tossed at sea. But the noise of the falling of the rock awakened me, as it were, and roused me from the stupidest, stupefied condition I was in. Filled me with horror, and I thought of nothing then but the hill falling upon my tent, and all the household goods, and burying all at once. And this sunk my very soul with, uh, within me a second time. After the third shock was over, and I felt no more for some time, I began to take courage, and yet I had not heart enough to go over my wall again, for fear of being buried alive, but sat still upon the ground, greatly cast down, and dis uh, disconsolate, uh, not knowing what to do. Sounds like it's another one from the person who was stuck here. Mm hmm Okay. So we just need a third letter, I guess? Is that count? Oh, that's not true. I'm not sure how to look at the... This? Okay. So it doesn't say if I have... Um, find the other two letters. Yeah. It doesn't say... I mean, I did find two letters. I don't know if those are the letters. I need to break the lock. Okay. Gotta find something. Use the tackle, open the inventory. Great. Remember, you can use any item from your inventory by pressing action where it is, where its use is required. But it only works with the right item. Okay, so we have to tie this up the appropriate way. So, move this around, then E to move the rope. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. E. E. I'm guessing over here. Yep, okay. Yes! Oh, that was hard. No. <laughs> I can do an X. Please don't ask me to do, like, Cat's Cradle or anything and we're okay. Hey, you did bit, um, not spur us being able to delay. Do so. you think I remember anything from that time? That was, like, over a decade ago. Over two decades. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago. You remember that we used rope, though. I remember we used rope. <laughs> so you remember. <laughs> Good enough. Exactly. This is some pretty sophisticated stuff for somebody to build. Mm -hmm. Just, like, hanging out. But it sounds like they had a long time. Okay. It's nice how there's a convenient handhold rocks here. <laughs> Well-designed island. It's for somebody that wants to, like, climb without rope, I guess. So you got a waterfall and another thingamajig to go down on. You got some ladders. There's a thing to the, in the middle to the right. Shelter of some type. Yep. Okay. Cool beans. This is where Hazzy wants to move. Yes, I, I would move here. Be like, okay. oh, there's nobody around. Darn. We <laughs> must find a shelter <laughs> Darn. first. Oh, well, okay. The only sad part would be like, if I don't, like, so your ship crashes, mm -hmm. there better be some books left over, even if it's waterlogged books or something. Because, like, if I'm on here and I'm like, well, I can't read or anything. Like, yeah, like, but let's just assume there's no ship crash. It's just like, you just pick this place to live. Oh, yeah, then I would be happy. As long as there's enough coffee, enough books, also tea, because I can't have coffee all the time. So that would be good. Maybe we can find berries on the island where you can make berry tea or something. I don't know. I'm safe. Not in bad shape. It could be a good shelter until somebody rescues me. 
These trees have fruits. And a face. And back there, mm. there's a yep, stream of water. Face. Looks like a happy tree. Now I need to rest. Tomorrow, with a clearer Bob Ross head, was here. <laughs> I will find how to fix it. Shelter complete. I spent two days completely alone. Despite that, the island was familiarly comfortable. It was a beautiful place. All my life, I dreamed about freedom and exploring the world. Maybe he that was the book. way destiny had to give me the chance to fulfill my desire. Me and desire Vern are on adventure. the same page what here. What the hell? No pun intended. <laughs> I wasn't wrong. Okay, that moon looks a little scary. Bob Ross was not here. <laughs> I must find out what that light was. Okay. Flame of imagination. Investigate the hill. That monkey. There was a monkey? Are you mean the sound? Yeah, I, I don't see it, but I did hear it. I need to break yeah, the rope. Yeah, yeah, we need to break the rope. We need to find something. Break the rope. But the island has changed. We got an what elephant. Happened? All right. <laughs> uh, that's odd. Yeah, I don't know why an elephant just showed up and some other it's things just changed. hanging out. Hey, there's books over by the tree. Ask and you this shall is, receive. This is your island. This is my island. I asked for some books. I was like, I need to have books. What you about? <laughs> you know it, what would make it perfect? If we, get, we happen to have a steam deck, but this is like 1888, so I don't think we're getting a steam deck. Well, <laughs> like, you'd also want electricity. Yeah, yeah. Internet access. <laughs> but I mean, you know. Uh, maybe I can make some board games or something. I'm just checking to see if there's anything new over here. Yeah, yeah. totally makes sense. Okay, it doesn't it looks like everything's the same over here. But that freaking elephant is definitely not the same. Break that box up. Oh, it's not a real elephant. Aw oh, man, I thought it would but be a real what elephant. The, an elephant and a balloon? What's going on here? They feel familiar. Maybe a dream. Okay. Read away. <clears throat> Five weeks in a balloon. Jules Verne's first novel. Oh, I didn't know that. On January 31st, 1863, Jules Verne saw his first novel published, Five Weeks in a Balloon. The story describes a thrilling journey through the unexplored territories of Africa, led by the eccentric doctor Samuel Ferguson, his faithful lackey Joe, and professional hunter Dick Kennedy. Uh, hey, this is your dream. You always talk about wanting to have a hot air balloon. <laughs> this is your dream. I'm scared though, because you don't really get control of them. Yeah, I know. You should be scared. I am too. That's why when you told me you wanted a hot air balloon, I was like, mm. I'm more interested in like a blimp. <laughs> you ever you heard of crashes with the blimps? <laughs> like, yes, but there, but planes are. Planes crash at least as much. Oh, okay. And we <laughs> still use them. Anyways, in order to find the source of the Nile, these um, aer aeronauts decided to cross the continent, traveling in a balloon named Victoria in honor of the Queen of England, whose innovative use of hydrogen allowed it to make uh, long journeys. Yeah, innovative use of hydrogen. The novel immediately became a great um, public and critical success. In part, this was due to the enormous interest for the African continent of, um, of the audience at the time, but also because of the mixture of imaginary travel and solid, for the time, scientific for, uh, information. One of the most famous passages in the novel describes how an elephant tows the balloon to cross the mountain range known as the Mountains, uh, mountains of the Moon. Okay. Um, thanks to the first success, Vern uh, gained the financial security that would allow him to fulfill his dream of becoming a writer. He signed a contract with Pierre Jules Hetzel Publishing House, which was to publish the rest of his works for the next 40 years. It is worth noting, as a curiosity, that Vern had never written in a balloon when he wrote the book and would not do so until years later. 
And I do not blame him, <laughs> honestly. Okay, so we got that. Are you collecting stuff for like his various works? That's that's cool. Yeah, that they do I it like that. that. Way. Doesn't seem like I can do anything else with this right now. Mm -hmm. Make sure that books. Edgar Allan Poe, Alexandre Dumas, Victor Hugo. Never heard these names before. How strange. They don't look like they have been dragged here by the sea. Where do they come from? Don't look gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> Was Poe not in this time frame? I would have to look it up, but I have no idea. I almost feel like this is like happened in the future. Oh, but this is this is so, an alternate. An alternate. Look it, at it's that cloud! It's scary too. This definitely was not Bob Ross. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that cloud is really scary looking. What's going on here? Compagnie Parisienne d'électricité? That can't be. How does a street light get here? Water. And this writing desk. Again, it's weirdly familiar. Why does oh, it's a raven like ra it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably something to do with Poe. Okay? I don't know. I'm just a Poe boy. <laughs> um. Alright, I'm going to look up Poe's time frame. Okay. Very cloud by That must be the light I saw. Wait a moment. There's something on the ground. A machete. Uh, yes. Yeah, no. Edgar Allan Poe's works were out in this time frame, so it must have um must be because it's a different, you know, an alternate. Oh. The stick has a weird shape. The Nico almost like a key. No, I'll be back. Okay, we got a strange new key. What's this? A door. That wasn't here before. It's oh, jammed. Yeah. To activate the mechanism, I need the missing blocks. Could the petroglyphs be the answer? Maybe. I need something that can help me. Oh, well, we did just pick up a machete. Okay, so we got that. Let's let's use the key on it. Okay, we got that petroglyph. Let's go to this way too. Okay, we'll try that. We're gonna go this way. Make sure there's nothing new. It's destroyed. Fixing it will be difficult. Okay, let's use this. Okay, so let's go get more petroglyphs. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay. I feel like we should be able to read this rock, but nothing comes up for it, so we're not gonna worry about it. About opening this. I one. need something that can help me. Let's try to open up with this. Yeah, we got something. Hey, tools. Nice. There's a series of marks. It. Mm. Okay. Maybe we can look at uh, fixing the boat with that tools and then we'll go up. Maybe we get, yeah, maybe the tools will fix that. 
And then we'll go back that way. That's not useful now. Okay. We can't fix that with this right now. Okay, so we gotta go back the other way. I just wanted to try. I didn't know. <laughs> Bird gets a lot of jogging in on this island. We haven't gotten all the... Pe I don't think we have all the... Pe Okay, we're going to want to check out that middle. Okay, that's coming up. Can we even bring it? No? Okay, so let's do this. And we'll bring this up. We'll do this. Maybe Nord can end up helping us with this. I got confused with this before. What's up? Um, getting the ladders down. Okay. Maybe we gotta hit this. And hit this. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, so bring this up. I'm trying to get the one to, or, or if this one will go, actually, let's bring this one up. Maybe this one, second one on the left will go down to the, I don't know. I don't know. It's not moving at all. Okay, well, what about this? Okay, that works. Yay. Uh, -oh. uh we're gonna wanna fix this. Damn. Got some good work done. Yep. Like nothing. And here's the hieroglyph that we need to get. I haven't seen the third. Now I have all the blocks yet. for the door. I haven't seen the third. Ooh, what? There we go. And you ready to read? You were just <laughs> you were just like I I haven't found that. Oh, here. <laughs> January eighth, the dream. He was no sooner landed upon the earth, but he uh, moved. Uh, forward towards me with a long spear or weapon in his hand to kill me and when he came to a rising ground at some distance he spoke to me or i heard a voice so terrible 
that it was impossible to express the terror of it. All that I can say I understood was this. Seeing all these things have not brought thee to repentance, now thou shalt die. At which words I thought he lifted up the spear that was in his hand to kill me. No one that shall ever read this account will expect that I should be able to describe the horrors of my soul at this terrible vision. I mean that, even while I, it was a dream, I even dreamed that those horrors, uh, um, no, I even dreamed of those horrors, nor is it any more possible to describe the impression that remained upon my mind when I awakened and found it was but a dream. Sounds like you're having a good time. <laughs> Whatever that is. Hey. <laughs> the bird's like, that's not even me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we gotta go back to the door. Did you use a machete on this? Mm hmm. Cool. We're gonna run all the way back because we have all the petroglyphs. I'm gonna go to the door and put the petroglyphs in. Mm -hmm. Dude's got some pretty decent upper arm strength. <laughs> yeah. You need it out here. Okay. He is. Okay. I don't know what this it's supposed to be. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Somebody wants me inside. Though. What if it's a trap? Should I take the chance? However, I could probably find inside an explanation for what's going on. And of course, it's a much more solid shelter than a wood cabin. Or the cave. Or I guess the nope. crystals are glowing. Yep. Just the cr crystals and mushrooms and holy here. antikythera mechanism. What's <laughs> this place? Holy this hasn't been built by some <laughs> castaway. You. No. It's for jumping down. It's for jumping. Yeah, that's for. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. You know me, I see a mushroom in a game, and I'm like, check that out! Yeah. Look at this scary stalactite on the top. Mm-hmm. Runes? Something enigmatic they hold. This gallery could lead into the center of the earth. The center there of the we go. Oh, you okay. Center of the earth. Passion for geology. Journey to the Center of the Earth was published in 1864 and immediately became a success. Professor Leidenbrock and his nephew Axel discover a manuscript of 18th century alchemist. Right. Oh, okay, sorry. 16th century. I'm sorry, from over here it looked like 18th. Okay, which a 16th century alchemist describes a journey to the center of the Earth, starting in the crater uh, of the Icelandic volcano that... Uh, following his directions. Yeah. Following his directions and a trail of runes engraved in stone. They travel through a fantastic subterranean kingdom in which, among other amazing discoveries, they discover an island sea the size of Europe. Or inland sea. A battle between Jurassic creatures and even an encounter with primitive hominids. Byrne's exciting book was the product of a combination of his rich imagination and his knowledge of the vast geological discoveries of his time, as its pa latest, um, as its pages reflect the work of renowned scientists of the time, such as Alcide O. Alcide D O Bajani, like <laughs> O D sure. or Bajani Bagani. I don't uh, know. It's French, such as Baguette, paleontologist and president of the Ge Geological Society of France, and Charles Saint Clair de Ville. 
a volcanologist and founding member of the French Meteorologi Meteorological Society. However, some theories that were considered valid at the time have now been refuted. The most obvious example is the theory that, after an eruption, volcanic conduits remained hollow and that, for this reason, a worldwide network of interconnected subterranean caverns was possible. Modern science has shown that these conduits are too small and clogged with solid rock, making them unfortunately impassable to humans. That is true. Don't go into volcanoes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm trapped. Get over there. I hope there's another way out. Well then. Is there anything here? Yeah, it won't let me do anything. I can't do anything about it. There's a backpack there too. Are there any uh, you items there? that you could use? Uh uh, I can't go. I can't go past this area. You can't hit like use item. Machete. We can try. That's not useful now. Yeah. You have nothing else. Oh. Okay. They are trapped. Hey, do you see that? Mon left? Dieu. What's going on on this island? See? That's just to go up. No, no, no. Look in the ground. Do you see that? Oh, yeah, with the scary faces? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like the comedy and tragedy mm -hmm. faces. Oh, that's what that was? I was just like, yeah, scary faces with horns that are down, horns that are up, but no, it's the masks I was seeing. Like, I, I, I could be wrong. No, I'm pretty sure it's what you're thinking. Because uh, it's very literature-based, if you haven't noticed. It has been, yes. <laughs> the Life and Incredible Adventures of Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Wait a moment. I remember that. I've read this book a dozen times. My God. The letters, the cabin. These are elements of that same story. Am I hallucinating? Um, I mean, you are in a dream. <laughs> Robinson Crusoe, a great inspiration. Robinson Crusoe, written by Daniel Defoe, was published on April 25th, 1719, and is considered the first English novel. Defoe wrote Robinson Crusoe in approximately six months. Uh, when he was over 50 years old, and it was a phenomenon, becoming one of the books with most editions, translations, and knockoffs in history. Robinson Crusoe was, was passed off as a chronicle of real events. The stories of shipwrecked sailors were very popular at the time, and there are several names that could have served as inspiration for Defoe, among which stands out uh, that of the buccaneer Alexander Selkirk, who, in 1704, preferred to stay on the uninhabited island of Ma'atera um, in the South Pacific, rather than continue aboard the Clink for... Uh, Cle uh, uh, it's I. Okay. Clink ports, uh, which he considered too damaged to continue sailing. After four years and four months in solitude, he was rescued, safe and sound, by the Duke, another privateer ship, Upon his return to London, his story of survival made him a celebrity. In 1966, the island was renamed Robinson Crusoe's Island. Jules Verne was a great admirer of Defoe, Defoe's Robinson, something that is evident in many of his works, such as The Mysterious Island, 1874. Although in this case, what leads the protagonist to the island of the title is not a shipwreck at sea, but the fall of a hot air balloon. Seems to have a thing for balloons. <laughs> In 1882, he published A School for Robinsons, in which he shipwrecked his character on another island where they had to survive all kinds of dangers and threats, such as inclement weather, tribes of cannibals, and even wild animals, with only the help of an um, aborigine and their own hands. By the way, the full title of the work was The Life and Strange Surprising Adventures of Robinson Crusoe of York, um, Mariner who lived eight and twenty years all alone in an uninhabited island on the coast of America near the mouth of a great river of, yes, yeah, having been cast on shore by shipwreck where, wherein all the men perished but himself with an account how he was at last as strangely delivered by mm -hmm. pirates written by himself. <laughs> That's a long title, dude. No wonder they shortened that. Wait, is that... Their title? Wait a minute. 
by the way, the full title was... was of the work was, and then oh, per, the question. It really is. Yeah. Strange life, the life and strange surprising adventures. I was thinking, oh my gosh. Okay. I thought that was a, maybe it's a joke. I can't, is that real? I'll have to look that up. Do you want me to <laughs> like, look that up? Yeah, I find out if that's real, because that's. That's like hilarious if that's true. I don't I see I don't know that. I didn't know that. I love how they're putting like little tidbits of information like that in here though. Wait a moment. There's a note here. What mystery is this? All the books have my name on them. But they're all blank. You're famous, Vern. No titles. All right. Select the shelves in the correct order. Okay, so from the earth to the moon. So this one right here, you see on the right, it has like something pointing at it. Kind of looks like it could be a space thing. So we're gonna go with this. I already know this because I played around with this earlier. Um, and I remember this one because I I thought it was clever how they kind of left little clues on here for you to be able to figure it out. So the next one is around the world in 80 days. And there's a globe here, so your guess would be like, okay, so this would be. And then we have the green ray. There's a green, this is the only shelf, because I looked everywhere because I was like, the green ray? This is the only shelf with this bright green thing like you could see like kind of there's kind of bluish greenish things here but just straight up green is this one and then the golden volcano so on the right you can tell it looks like a pixelated volcano and there's like a cloud coming out of it going to the left um so this was yes. the last one it's ancient yep. greek the gift of Plasea so it's true. will help Life you to change pieces of the world of York, only if your imagination is as brilliant as her flame. Get that a lot going on. Okay, what? <laughs> yes, the full title, The Life and Strange Surprising Adventures of Robinson Crusoe of York Mariner, who lived eight and 20 years all alone in an uninhabited <laughs> island on the coast of America, written by himself. But there's, <laughs> there's like a dot, dot, dot. So yes, it's including that. So there you go. And to think, I'm always like thinking that like- So, so you think I'm long-winded, like, imagine. So two of my favorite things have long titles, but that's the longest title ever. So like my favorite uh, movie is like, I don't feel I don't feel a part of this world anymore or something like it's a really long title. And if don't feel at home in this world anymore, one yeah, of those. Yeah, yeah, and I always forget because it's a really long title. Yeah, but it's, it's not the even, Melanie Linsky movie. Yeah, and it's not even as close as <laughs> as that book. That book is title. And then also, um, I like um, this free point and click if on a winter's night for travelers. And I've always thought that was a long title too. Mm -hmm. Nothing. It has nothing on that title. Now, now we know. Yeah. And those are short titles comparatively. <laughs> What's this? It must be hundreds of years old. What? An artifact. That's what we need. Good heavens. But what in the name of... So that thing that crumbled, you'd be able to... What in uh, the name? But, but here again? What's going on? Did this artifact do it? What is this? So this must be his first time with this with the artifact. Find a way out of the cave. No cracks in the flow of reality. So I'm guessing we probably have to do it over. Maybe the part that gave way. Yeah. Wait a moment. The inscription. The gift of Plasea will help you to change. We were saying Plasia. It's Plasea, but apparently. Plasea. Okay. Maybe I could fix that with this devilish artifact. Um, maybe, but I'm gonna try to use it over here to see if we can't get the like the stuff over here that I wanted. <laughs> no, dang, because there's like a backpack with rope and stuff's happening. Yeah, maybe it's just a distraction. I think it's a distraction. Thanks, devs. Thanks Tony for distracting. Has changed. What happened? Okay, let's get it. What? What? Okay. 
If you gotta to wait to for it to. No, I don't think so. Okay. I actually know the secret, but I'm not very strong Fortunately, right now. Fortunately, stones resisted and kept withstanding. Oh, he had to change the way that he. We gotta hurry. We gotta I was hurry. wondering why you're why you're Russian. <laughs> because I'm not gonna fall. You you didn't hear that blip 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 everywhere. This is a nightmare. I must run away from this island. Maybe I could fix the boat with this devilish artifact. I'd rather face the dangers at sea than stay trapped in this madness. Even with the giant sea beast thing. Escape from the island. Like, escape from New York, but we're escaping from the island. <laughs> and uh, Vern is, Vern, Vern is, um, Vern is playing, um, what's Snake. his name? S Snake Piskin. Snake, <laughs> Snake uh, Piskin. Piskin or something. What the Piskin. hell is going on? Yeah, there's wind here, dude. That's not good. Okay, Scary Cloud, we're going to leave you here. <laughs> Stop looking at us. So scarily. <laughs> what a menace. I think the cloud is causing all this wind. It hates us. <laughs> or just uh, sky, though. The colors are pretty. Okay. Salvation. Oh. Oh, freaking A. I messed it up. <laughs> Let's try it again. Hey. I did it again. I'm sorry, y'all. You got this. You got this. The S. Oops. I've got to, like, look at my fingers real quick and see where they're at. Okay. I think I just have my... There we go. Nailed <laughs> it. First try. Flame of imagination complete. I was moving my fingers. Hours later, and I was on the wrong while piece. I was drifting away, my head still boiled with questions. I could never imagine that my salvation would come in the form of the monster that destroyed my own ship. Ah. Scared to death, I discovered a new truth. Was it was a monster. a monster, yes, but made of steel. Of steel. Chapter three, aftermath of the inevitable. Hmm. Are you dripping? Oh no, that's I could never <laughs> imagine that my salvation would come in the form of the monster that destroyed my own ship. What a tale. If I hadn't seen the iMag working with my own eyes, I would truly believe that you as we doctors say, were as mad as a March hare. Does something of this make any sense to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, but it's not me who has to find it. However, it's obvious that everything, your hallucinations, your amnesia, the books, even the island, draws lines that link your mind with the iMag. Any clue of how we can fix that? Have you considered that your status inside the Nautilus could be the reason for your, let's say, disconnection? It must be hard for you to live together with the ones responsible for the attack that sank your ship. Months ago, I would have told you yes, and that I hated them for it. But I understood that war is war, and I must recognize, much to my regret, that the captain has opened for me the doors of an incredible world that without the Nautilus and his technology, Under the water? I could never dream of reaching. Am I a prisoner? Well, there are much worse prisons out there. We are all trapped inside the Nautilus one way or another, my friend. A similar dilemma afflicts myself since I began to be part of this crew. I consecrated my career to save lives, and now I'm a piece of a ruthless war machine. On the other hand, my cholera research is only possible thanks to Nemo's technology. He's an extraordinary man, but fearful. His current condition is unsettling. History will judge him as it will do with we us. We were talking about and how he was rights, off it will park weird. us in the place he believes we deserve. Now, go to your quarters and get some sleep. Doctor's orders. So I guess the question is, is like, mm, 
we're doing good things, but we're also part of this war machine. Mm-hmm. Eh. Like, <laughs> like that's the di- the moral dilemma. Are the positives outweighing the negatives? Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> uh, okay. And he wanted me to go to my court. I guess we'll do that. I think we'll end it after we go to the quarters and get some sleep. Oh, what's going on? Vern, I knew I'd find you here. How are you? What has the doctor said? I'm fine. I just need some... Oh, good. I'm afraid that it will have to wait. What happens? (laughs) She's like, I didn't really want to talk to you. (laughs) Oh, this never stops. Vern, I revised my notes. Maybe if we dig more into the ship that carried the chest and the compass, maybe we can find out another way to open it. Just in case the iMag doesn't work anymore. Not a bad idea. (laughs) Do me a favor. The captain keeps a very detailed record of the Greek ship's history. Please, take a look. See what you can find. Uh, Adriel, I'm they coming, really want you. I'm coming. <laughs> Search into the closet. Back and... Look for the log. <laughs> I don't envy her job. That's for sure. Very uh, important to her, though. So. So where are we supposed to be going? Uh, search the log in the chart room. Okay. That's kind of suspicious as well. With her. Yeah. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, I. I don't know who we can trust in this world right now. Um, search the log in the. Because, like I said, she seems to know chart too much. room. There it is. We are right here, so we need to go up. It's up. It's just right of the bridge, so we just we need to go up from where we're at. Wonder if we can still use the um, elevators. We'll find out if we can still use the elevators. If we can't use the elevators, we'll figure out something else. Thank God. The elevators are still that, working. That's what I was saying, Vern. There you go. <laughs> there you go, Vern. Uh, what was what was it? Them? It's next to the bridge. We should be able to go to because it doesn't say chart room anywhere. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing, yeah, to the bridge then. Let's like look at the map. Just yeah, chart rooms just went over from where we're at right now. Okay. And that's all the records we have about the Scylla, the Greek ship. But these are the same papers that... Oh, wait. What does this mean? This note. Important info in audio cylinders 399244... I hope we don't have to remember this, because it's numbers in my... Listen to the three audio cylinders. Oh, God. (laughs) Sub-Lieutenant Ned Land speaking. Documentation record regarding the Ancestor's Island. This is the place in which everything tells us that the flame of Hephaestus lies in. It's not only protected by those so-called ancestors, but also it's located at the center of a magnetic anomalies area that drives navigation devices mad. And to make matters worse, the island is also surrounded by huge currents and fog banks, making it virtually unreachable. Who's this Ned Land? I can't recall that name in the crew. Sub-Lieutenant Ned Land speaking. Documentation record regarding the Compass of Destiny. According to our research, this compass, crafted with a (laughs) mineral only found in the Ancestor's Island, always points to it as if it was its own north. This, combined with a coordinate system, was used by the few ships that still traded with the island. Uh, Nothing new. They talked about the Compass of Destiny What happened to this officer? I can't remember when. Mm -hmm. So, um, his voice kind of also sounds like the current captain. Hmm. What's going on here? Dominions of the nation? Hmm. The IC, Northern Northern Ocean, the nation, Golden Empire, all news of the empire. Okay. The Aksum Sea, that's like, um, where... Aksum. Uh, it, it, it's Central Africa. Okay. Oh, I see. But, um, Askum. Askum? Yeah, A-S-K-U-M. 
uh, that's kind of like uh, where some of the thought process for Atlantis could be. I still have some stuff to do. You have one more you gotta listen. Oh yeah, that's not it. <laughs> Where is it? Maybe you gotta go down? I still have some... Sub-Lieutenant Ned Land speaking. Documentation record regarding the flame of Hephaestus. In historical records and legends, it is told that the Atlantean people found in the ancestors' island an amazing energy, which they called the flame of Hephaestus. Its implementation allowed them, in a few years, to develop unimaginable technology. It moved their ships and the gigantic machinery that built their city and harvested large crops. They also created a system of extraction. Hmm. I must record this here. Today, I have found something that... It may change it all. I was with the communication system, routine maintenance, when I locked on a very strange signal. It, it sounded almost like a voice, but it was only noise. But, oh God, Captain has replied and they've been talking like he understood that horrible sound. It seemed like they were talking about picking up a load at a certain point of the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. And the Captain was constantly repeating a name, Vern. I haven't recognized the other voice, but Burn. I can't believe it. Nemo is not a traitor. I must confirm this before saying anything. We are about to dock at the secret base. If there's any evidence against Nemo, it will be there, in his office. I hope that they don't catch me, and that I'm wrong, too. What? What have I just heard? Was Nemo waiting for me in the middle of the sea? Aftermath part two complete. My brothers. Uh oh. I know you were afflicted. Shame fell on us because we failed in our mission of capturing terrorist Nemo. I know. We're terrorists, apparently. Because I felt the same dishonor. But I have had an epiphany. We didn't suffer a defeat. Fate revealed our true mission in front of our eyes. What's that? The artifact is a prodigy that can change destiny. We have been spending our lives under the boot of politicians and bureaucrats of the Curie of the nation, those who just exist to fill their bellies at the expense of our blood. I say, let's take the artifact and forge a new world Based on order and purity. Like it kind of sounds good that they don't want to be under someone's Are you roof, with but then brothers? like based on purity, it's like. Eh. Yeah, we want to have our own order that controls everyone. We want to take over the nation and do the same things. <laughs> Those days, my sanity felt like walking on a glass floor. I discovered that no one in the crew had ever heard talk about Officer Ned Land. If that was not enough, the recordings disappeared and left me with no other evidence of it than my damaged memory. Know Somebody how that feels. <laughs> was pulling the strings of my fate. What did they want from me? I Don't had burn. to find out before it was too late. I could That's just it. follow Ned Land's advice. Search into Nemo's office and bring the truth to light. Whatever it was. Chapter 4. In the Entrails of the Mystery. March 30th, 1888, Southern Ocean. I must leave my plans like for breaking into Island Nemo's office for later. Mm -hmm. The captain and Edriel want to meet me. Story mission, head intro. Okay, so meet Captain Nemo. So we're so the next thing is to meet Captain Nemo, but I think we're gonna 
um, call it for there. I will be playing this a little bit m uh, more later, but mm -hmm. um, if you enjoyed this and you like what you see, please be sure to go down to the descriptions and click on the Steam link and wishlist or purchase because it's currently out the game. Also, there is a free demo on Steam for this game if you want to play it for yourself. Um, I'm really liking this game. I like mm. the story. Yeah. Um, I'm really enjoying you it. You are really into character pieces, and this is building up the characters very well. Yeah, they're doing excellent. So I know that... So I looked. I tend to look at the reviews ahead of time to, mm -hmm. for, cause just to see, get the vibe of what people are saying. Yeah. And like I know there was kind of mixed reviews. Um, some people enjoyed it, and there is like some people that just weren't into it. But I think... I think it really depends on what you like story-wise. I really like character development, and mm -hmm. they're go doing a good job. And I like how they're making... It kind of feels like a mystery to me. So I like how they're doing that. Like, you're you're figuring out the thing, the story as you go. And I think they did an excellent job um, with the story, um, setting it up, and also the characters mm -hmm. are interesting as well, too. Like, I want to know more about the characters. Yeah. Um, I'm, so I'm having a lot of fun with it. But yeah, please be sure to go down to the descriptions and click on that Steam link. And I will have another um, part of this game put up later. Thank you so much, devs, for giving us this opportunity to be able to showcase this game on our YouTube channel. And we will see y'all soon. Peace. Bye-bye. Take care.